Uh, I just watched this movie last night about Nikola Tesla. That movie was pretty cool. It had Ethan Hawke playing Tesla and Jim Gaffigan playing George Westinghouse, who was one of Tesla's investors and uh, an inventor himself and one of the men who built America, so to speak. It also had the dude from Twin Peaks playing Thomas Edison generally being an asshole <laughs> dude was not cool electrocuting elephants electrocuting dogs electrocuting horses in public all to try to um discredit tesla and try to tout his own inventions as the better alternative so maybe a lot of people don't know but I'm a huge fan of Nikola Tesla. That dude's one of my heroes. And it blows my mind that I was never taught about him in school. I never heard one mention of that guy's name all of my 12 years of regular schooling, which is completely insane. The dude grew up in America, largely, became an American citizen. He was in direct contact with Thomas Edison, J.P. Morgan, George Westinghouse, um, all, all kinds of really famous people of the time, really important, wealthy, smart people of the time. And for some reason, he's been practically written out of the history books. It, it's pretty mind-blowing that such an interesting, innovative, just special person, especially to our culture, um, has been just uh, essentially erased from history. So Tesla is responsible for the invention or discovery, however you want to put it, of alternating current. And Edison's whole power thing was direct current. So we all know AC, DC, the band. But AC and DC are also electric terms, talking about the different kinds of electricity. So Tesla is definitely who the cars are named after. But I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Tesla coils, and those were a real thing. Tesla was born in 1856, and he died in 1943. For anybody interested in learning more about Tesla, I would strongly recommend reading his book. It's called My Inventions and Other Writings by Nikola Tesla. I've read it. It's one of my favorite books, and it's just really cool to get the information straight from the horse's mouth instead of secondhand about the guy it's from the guy i really love autobiographies because why would i want to read about somebody when i could just read what that person said and in tesla's book he talks about his inventions and goes into detail about a lot of his discoveries and um growing up and working for edison and knowing jp morgan and um you know in installing the turbines at niagara falls plus his discovery of wireless electricity. So this dude has been essentially erased from our educational history books. This dude was maybe the smartest human that ever lived. I don't say that lightly. I really think this guy might have been like the most brilliant dude since Da Vinci or something. The guy spoke eight different languages and he's responsible for the discovery of alternating current, um, remote control, neon lighting, x-ray technology, radio, wireless electricity, and a whole bunch of other things. So a lot of people are probably going to tell me that I'm wrong and that the radio was invented by an Italian guy named Marconi. So Tesla actually was given the patent after he died. Because he actually did invent the radio before Marconi did. And Marconi, when he sent his first radio communication, did it using 17 of Tesla's patents in the design. Tesla was such a, like, almost alien mind. For his inventions and his machines, he could see the blueprints in his head. And he would put it together in his mind before he ever put it into a physical form and he would see how it would work in his brain 
And as legend has it, he wrote in his book and other people said he would put together a machine and it would work the first time every time. So he would see the blueprint in his head, put it together, and it would work the first time every time. The dude was like unfathomably intelligent and for some reason has been left out of the conversation when it comes to legendary American people. You know, Edison is a household name. There's all kinds of household names. But I think he's right up there with Edison, Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Leonardo da Vinci, any of these guys. He should be included in the same conversations, but for some reason he's not. I I suspect the reason that he's not is because people don't want you to know about Tesla. The most amazing thing that he discovered was wireless electricity using the earth as its own dynamo the air we're breathing right now is electric and tesla figured out how to tap into the electricity that's in the air naturally so using the earth as its own dynamo utilizing electromagnetism he somehow figured out how to tap into this untapped energy that's all around us all the time Tesla figured out wireless electricity transmission in like 1901, I think it was. So this dude had it figured out over a hundred years ago. And a lot of people say that, well, you know, his ideas couldn't work because it's not enough electricity without, you know, injuring things. But imagine if that kind of energy could be harnessed and like stored into batteries or something for use later. You wouldn't have to like electrocute everybody to, to power things. I think it's completely possible, especially if his ideas from a hun- over 100 years ago were refined and investigated more. You know, if we had an entire century to refine his ideas and build upon them, I can only imagine the kind of world that we would live in today. We might be living in like the fucking Jetsons, you know? Might be able to get from here to China in four hours in some sort of crazy magnetized train tube. I could see it happening, but the powers that be, the big money, the big money interests. When he came to these people, they were basically like, oh, you want to give the whole world free electricity? Nope. Fuck you. Can't make money on free electricity for everyone. It's a really disturbing, shameful thing, in my opinion, that Tesla's not taught in schools and uh, his ideas have not been expanded on and implemented on a global, massive scale. I mean, some of his ideas obviously have changed the world and we utilize them every day, like alternating current. We're using that now, but I think alternating current just scratches the surface of how genius some of this dude's ideas were. It really blows my mind that he's not taught in school. And uh, I really would urge anyone who doesn't know much about the dude to look into him. One of the things that he invented was back in, in 1893 at the World's Fair in Chicago, Tesla created a remote control submarine to show off. And uh, by the way, that was the first World's Fair that was all lit up by light bulbs. And Tesla and George Westinghouse earned the contract to light the World Fair in Chicago in 1893. And it was a, a big spectacle for people because light bulbs were a new thing. The whole thing was powered by alternating current and um, thousands and thousands and thousands of light bulbs. But anyways, Tesla made this remote control submarine. This was in the 1890s. This dude was making shit like this. Imagine the kind of world we would live in if his ideas were expanded on more. I think the coolest part about making a remote control submarine versus a remote control car or something like that is it's in the water, A. So electric shock, um, proving that it doesn't have that, I think is kind of cool. On top of, you could see if there was like a wire attached to it or something. And the fact that it goes underwater proves that the control through the radio waves is actually going through the water. It's not um, being obstructed by 
the separation between uh, the submarine and the controller with, with physical physical matter in between. In that book, Tesla talks about when he figured out that uh, some of these like light bulbs that he screwed into the dirt were lighting up outside of his laboratory. He had figured out that wireless electricity is possible and safe and uh, limitless, essentially. There's this one part in Tesla's book where he's talking about like melting copper wire with the beams of electricity that he's created. But that force that's able to melt metals, he would put like his head in the beam and not feel anything or be injured or receive any sort of painful shock or anything like that. This dude was like a fucking super genius, superhero alien brain shit. Like unimaginable, almost magical levels of intellect and power harnessing what nature has to offer in a special way. I think it's worth mentioning too that Tesla, in his opinion, the pyramids, the great pyramids at Giza, he doesn't think that they were tombs at all. He believed, and this is one of the smartest dudes that ever lived in my opinion, Tesla believed that the Great Pyramids at Giza were actually giant power plants. He thought that they were giant wireless power plants that shot out electricity, possibly to the entire planet. Now, this wouldn't completely not make sense. Tesla's laboratory, where he built the Wardenclyffe Tower in New York, his big giant Tesla coil, was built over an aquifer. So he, something about the ionization that happens with the water flowing underground does something to help the conductivity of the electricity with the tower. And he was talking about how if you look at the Great Pyramids of Giza, they're built over aquifers as well where there's flowing water under the ground. And that would make a lot of sense if built in the same way as his Tesla coils those very well could have been gigantic wireless electric power plants. Understanding more about this dude and his mind and how he thought so abstract and outside of the box, I'd be inclined to believe a lot of the things he said, even though he was very eccentric and in some ways like very OCD and kind of a kook. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in more than that. Our daily life has been affected by this guy and his ideas. Super genius. Anyways, look up some Nikola Tesla stuff. Maybe watch a documentary or read his book, My Inventions and Other Writings. I think there's even a Dover Thrift Edition now that you can buy on Amazon. It's like $4 or something. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for checking this out. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. If you want to support the podcast, you can always go to riffsordie.com and pick up some merch. You can also go to patreon.com slash riffsordie and subscribe to become a patron. Feel free to shoot me an email at podcast at riffsordie.com. All questions and comments are welcome. Thanks a lot for your support. Take care, everybody. (laughs) 